Hey everyone, um, it's CJ again. Now this is not a review. This is uh, I'm actually here to talk about the the new update to the tournament rules. Um, essentially, th there were two bit well tournament rules in the FAQ. Um, there's a bunch of clarifications in the FAQ as far as regarding IG88, uh, some card interactions. Um, those are I guess the smaller part of the news. Um, the the first big thing, and this is the biggest of the, the two things, there, there are two big pieces of news. First of all, it's concerning this ship, the TIE Phantom. We haven't gotten to the review yet on it. We'll be getting to that in probably about, see, this is wave, that's wave four. I'm about to do wave three, um, and I have to apologize in advance. I'm going to be missing the Imperial Shuttle from wave three. I never bought it. Um, right now, financially, I don't have the means to just go pick it up. If I did, I'd grab it. Go ahead and do the video, do the review, that way y'all have that. Um, so I'm going to have to see about if I can borrow that from a friend of mine. But, as far as this ship, the, the Phantom's a Wave 4 ship, and what makes the Phantom so good is that it has the ability to cloak. Um, normally, with the Phantom, when you cloak, you place a cloak token next to it, it's cloaked, the next turn, you can use a two-speed template, um, this is generically, mind you, to go left, right, or forward. Um, this, is, well, this is how it's supposed to work, or how it did work. When your activation phase came up, before you revealed your dial, you would use the two-speed template to barrel roll left, right, or go forward, uh, speed two. Then you would reveal your dial and do your maneuver. Um, that is how they had it set up for, I think, came out in July of last year, might have been a little bit earlier, for Imdar Alpha. So, ever since Imdar Alpha, when the Phantom was first, you know, they did their release event, that's how it worked. Um, since then, the Phantom has proven to be a ship that, quite, quite frankly, it shaped the metagame. Um... Without the Phantom, you wouldn't have the prevalence of Fat Han, and you things would not have taken the, the turn that they've taken as far as pilot skill bidding, stuff like that. Um, what they've done to the Phantom is they've moved that decloak step. Um, so before, when you decloaked during your activation, so you'd, you'd go ahead, you'd decloak, reveal your dial, move. Now... At the beginning of the activation phase, after all other triggers have, have ever, after all other effects have triggered, you decloak. So now you, before anybody moves, you decloak your ship either to left, to right, or to forward. Then, in initiative order, everybody moves their ships just like normal, and you move your phantom on its initiative order. Um, now, the reason this is big is it makes it where the Phantom has to play that where am I going as far as my decloak, where do I decloak before all the movement happens. Um, which, some would argue that was the Phantom's biggest strength was that you could, essentially you had this bubble that you started from instead of starting from right where you were. Um... A lot of people say that this is a nerf to the Phantom. I personally believe this is rebalancing it. I don't think they intended the ship to affect the metagame the way it did. Um, I think it was sort of a side effect that nobody saw coming. Um, now that they've rebalanced it, it's still an effective ship. We had a tournament here, and I'm in Fredericksburg. Um, we had a tournament here on Saturday, the, the, like two days after the FAQ came out. Now, the FAQ does not go into effect till the 15th, but all my players were familiar with the FAQ. They were caught up with it. They understood it. So it was essentially, do you want to use the FAQ? And all of them, you know, unanimously were like, yes, we want to use the new FAQ and the new tournament rules. And the first place finisher was a Cast Scarlet and Whisper build. Um, now, I know this isn't a store championship or regionals or any of that, but it still speaks to the effectiveness of the Phantom, even though it's quote-unquote been nerfed. Um, 
So, I mean, that's that's the news on the Phantom. It's still an effective ship. Uh, we will get a proper review of it in a couple weeks when I do Wave 4. Um, until then, the other thing that I have to let you all know about... Um, originally, when you were going to a tournament, you get asteroid tokens. Each player would bring all six of the little asteroids, and these were what was used for um, your obstacles. Th this was it. For the past two and a half years, this was it as far as obstacles. Well, the uh, tournament rules have been changed. Um, and the reason why, these, this is a debris token. You can see it's a busted up X-Wing. Um, you got a few other ones. There's a busted up B-Wing. There's some Empire stuff too. Uh, there's a TIE, some, TIE Bomber fuselage floating through space. Um, essentially what happened was these came out, the three Rebel pieces, which are these three. Right here. Oh, you can't see them on there, can you? Alright. Those three, those are the pieces for the, yeah, those are pieces of rebel ships, at least I think. Oh no, I take it back. That's a imperial ship there. Okay, so, yeah, because otherwise it'll all be small. Alright, these three are rebels. There's a hawk, there's an X-wing, and there's a B-wing. I right, can't see them too well. Um, and then the other three, and none of the six are shaped the same. They're, each of them are unique. Those are all Imperial ships busted up. TIE Fighter, Bomber, and... I can't even tell what that's supposed to be part of. I have no idea. But, now, the way that the tournament rules work, because uh, these came out with the VT-49 for the pieces of Rebel ships, and with YT-2400 for pieces of Imperial ships, um, the way the rules work now, the, those are, are legal for tournament play, which is great, you know. Um, but the problem is, well, before people were bringing a set of six asteroids. All right, well now, you can bring, you bring three unique obstacle tokens. So if I want, I can bring that asteroid, that debris cloud, I think I moved my camera. Maybe not, okay. That debris cloud and that debris cloud. Or I can bring three tiny asteroids. If, if I have a TIE sword, I can bring three little tiny asteroids. That's big. That's big. There we go. Like these three. And what happens is the players take their obstacles before the match and they set, like, let's say these are my three, these are my opponent's three. Set them all in one big pile and both players pick from that pile. So now where before, it was just asteroids, um, and you knew what you were getting. You knew there was going to be one of each asteroid, and each of them was different. Now, you can have two players both bring the, uh, the big asteroid. And to give you an idea of how much bigger it is than the other ones, you know, I mean, so that, that's a decent amount of table space you can take up with this. Um... Like, I can bring all three big debris fields, because there's three big de uh, two big debris fields and a big asteroid. So I can bring stuff that will cover a lot of table space. You know? Um, so, yeah, asteroids are, you know, ast asteroids were already legal. The debris fields now are legal, and uh, they, they do change things a bit. Um... So, I mean, that, that's about it. I, do I think the debris fields are good for the game? Yes. Um, I, I think they're definitely good. I think it adds a... Th they work differently than the asteroids. Um, because debris fields, when you with an asteroid, when you fly over it, you roll a die. If you roll a hit or a crit, you take whatever you get and you lose your action. With this, you fly over it. If you fly over it, 
Oh, and if you land on an asteroid, you don't get an action. With this, um, also if you land on it, you do not get an action. You're too busy dodging debris. Um, you only take damage on a critical. You know, you get a, you can only take a critical. And um, what's the third thing about it? Oh yeah, uh, you gain a stress token for flying through it. So, you know, you take the you take the two big debris fields and the big asteroid. You, you can make things a little bit harder for guys like Cynthia or Fell and stuff. Um, then you got guys who who love stress like Arvel Crinid. So I'm gonna fly Arvel. I'm gonna take is it Arvel? No, it's Tycho. Sorry, Arvel's the one that can touch while shoot while touching. If I have Tycho, yeah, I'm gonna take debris fields. I can fly through debris fields all day. Um, Key and Farlander, yeah. Uh, Jack Porkins, maybe. You you have ships who just love this stuff. So, you know. Anyway, that's about it. Um, I really don't think I have much else to add. The uh, If you are watching this and you're in the Fredericksburg area, the next event that we're having at Game Vault, which is the lo one of our two local stores, is um, on April 11th for International Tabletop Game Day. Uh, I will be running a trench run scenario. Um, essentially, it's hop in, hop out. You don't have to stay the whole time, and I'll probably be able to get it in at least once or twice. It, it's, a, it's a limited amount of time scenario when it's running, so it's not like, you know, it's not like it'll take forever. Um, until then, uh, y'all have a good one.